Okay, so let's kind of do the basics here. Let's get the basics out of the way. The first thing I think you guys can like about vertex form is it's very easy to find the vertex. Vertex is three comma negative four, right? Remember the H and the K? Yes, and there, that's also nice because we can say the transformations are going to be right three down four. Okay, so if we think about the parent graph, it's being shifted three inches to the right and then down four. All right. Um, now, I, I use the vocabulary find the zeros, but in reality, remember the real zeros are the same thing as the x intercepts, or the, sorry, the real zeros are the same thing as the x intercepts. But regardless, either way, to find these zeros, you're going to replace y with equal to 0. Because the reason why I use zeros is not every time do quadratics always have two x-intercepts, right? They could have one x-intercept, or they could have zero x-intercepts. Now, in this case, remember to add the 4 before you take the square root. Remember the inverse functions? Remember when we did that lesson? You got to get the 4 to the other side. And then remember when you introduce the square root? Some of you guys got this wrong on your test. You have to do plus or minus. I'm going to use interval notation. 3 plus 2 is 5, and 3 minus 2 is 1. But the real zeros in this problem is 5 and 1. It's not 3. right? Don't get confused with linear factorization form and say, oh, the 0 is 3 with the multiplicity of 2. No, that's not. The zeros, or the x-intercepts in this case, are 5 and 1. right? Now, do we even know what this graph even, uh, oh, and the y-intercept, sorry. The y-intercept is when what is equal to 0? x. So do the math here. Negative, so 0 minus 3 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 4 is 5. So can we graph this equation? Oh, I'm sorry. What did I ask? I said find the zeros and the multiplicity. That's it. So since I say find the zeros and the multiplicity, that's usually what people get triggered with. They see this x minus 3 squared, and they say, oh, that's a 0 of 3 with a multiplicity of 2. right? Because it, it makes sense. That's what we've just learned. But don't get confused by this. If you do what you know how to do, what you've already learned, the zeros are at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The vertex is at 3, negative 4. The y-intercept is at 5. Right? That's what the graph looks like. Agreed? I mean, we should know what this graph looks like based on this information. Now, to understand the, defi to understand the multiplicity question, what is the multiplicity of those zeros? How do they cross? Do they cross like an S-curve? Do they bounce like a quadratic? Or do they cross like a line? Right? So they both have a multiplicity of 1. They both have multiplicity. And again, guys, that makes sense because what's the power of this? What's the, what's the degree of, that, of this polynomial? 2. Like, it wouldn't make sense for the multiplicity to be like 5 and 6 or anything like that, right? Agreed? Yes? So therefore, that's why, um, as you guys can see, that. Uh, um, so that makes sense. Now let's go and take a look at this example. Oh, man. Yeah, you're good. So if we go ahead and take a look at this example, same kind of idea. We don't have a k, so we can say that's 0. So our vertex is going to be 4, 0. What are the transformations? Well, again, we have right 4. Ooh, we have a vertical stretch of 2. And we have a reflect the x-axis. Ah, that's a, that's a good review of what we've already learned. Oh, OK, good, I like this. Define the zeros. Now this one, we could set it equal to 0 and solve. So are the zeros 4 and negative 2? No. What happens when you solve, guys? The first thing you're going to do is divide out the negative 2. Right? Then you could take the square root. There is no plus or minus of 0. So 0 equals x minus 4. So then you could say x is equal to 4 with a multiplicity of 2. Right? So this one, actually, you could have found the zeros just by looking at the equation. Because is there any addition? or Like, is this just one factor? You just have one factor. So it's in your factorized form. 
right? This form is different than that form. Um, to find the y-intercept, let's see, the y-intercept, you plug 0 in for x. So y is equal to a negative 2. 0 minus 4 squared. 0, negative 4 squared is 16. 16 times negative 2 is negative 32. Now let's just go and graph this. So do we already know what this graph should look like? It's shifted 40 inches to the right. It's opening down. Or you should also know it has a 0 at 4 with the multiplicity of 2, so it's going to bounce. Agreed? And 1, 2, 3, 4. That's what the graph looks like. So we can confirm, again, but either by the transformations or by there, what that multiplicity is. Okay. So that is all just a complete review. I went through that whole scheme just to review stuff that we already know or already stuff we're supposed to know. Yes? Why did you distribute to find the y-intercept but not to find the like distribute the I didn't. What do you mean? Well, I mean, like with the second one, you multiply the negative 2 by the negative 4 instead of right. dividing. Well, because if you divide it out, then you divide it by y, which wouldn't really make sense. You're trying to solve for y. I'm not understanding. Like, to find the zero, you would distribute the negative. You, would you can't distribute the into there, though. You'd have to square this first. You can't, like, that doesn't, like, you, when you're, you're sol here, you're solving for x. Here's the equation, solve for x. So you can't distribute that. You've got to undo what's happening to the x. So you don't want to distribute it. You want to undo what's happening to the x. Anyway, you can't distribute inside of there. Anyways. You can't distribute that two. That this quantity is being squared. So you can't distribute a two inside of that. Our goal is to un our goal is to solve for x. That's why I went through all those inverse operations. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So in this case, the difference here is I'm trying to solve for y. Y is already solved, right? Y is already by itself. So now I just need to simplify this. And again, notice I didn't distribute this. I simplified this first. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. Then I squared negative 4 to give me positive 16. Then I multiplied it by negative 2. I did not distribute that negative 2 inside of there. Because again, if you, if you were to distribute this, you would get a 0. Negative 2 times negative 4 is an 8. And then you'd square it. That gives you a positive 64. That's not the same thing as my answer. Okay. So whenever you have a number outside of a um, parentheses that has an operation, don't distribute that number. Okay? If it didn't have the square, would you distribute it? No, yeah. If it, if, I mean, if it didn't have the square, you could distribute it. But again, you're following the order of operations, though. I mean, would you, like, like for the ones with the zeros, would, would you distribute it or would you just divide it first and not bother distributing it? It doesn't matter. Like, if that square wasn't there, mm -hmm. you could do either way. I'll show you in a quick example in a second. Like, it just depends on what you want to do. Like, 